Hey, my name is Seem Lund, and I recently stumbled across this uh, study that was published a few weeks ago that showed that how humans are able to reverse their biological age by three years after just eight weeks. What? I don't think that three years is especially like a significant, but at the same time, the eight week thing is uh, quite uh, good in, in a sense that it kind of shows that you can change your biological age quite rapidly. So in this video, we're going to talk about what was the study, what did they measure, what are the results, and also my own opinions about this. If you're new here, then click like and subscribe as well for future videos about this kind of health and biohacking. Do it. So here is the study, and uh, the title is uh, Potential Reversal of Epigenetic Age Using a Diet and Lifestyle Intervention, a Pilot Randomized Clinical Trial and was uh, published in the journal Aging in April 2021. They took 43 healthy adults between the ages of 50 and 72, and they put them on an eight-week treatment program that included diet, sleep, exercise, and relaxation guidance, as well as some supplemental probiotics and phytonutrients. Then they measured the DNA methylation age, and uh, that is used to kind of assess the person's epigenetic or biological age. It basically uses DNA methylation data to predict the age, the biological age of a particular organ and the cell as well as, you know, the entire person. Methylation is the process of adding methyl groups to other molecules and transferring them around. Methyl groups are atoms with a single carbon unit that attaches to hydrogen. The role of methylation is to control almost every reaction inside your body, starting with digestion, your brain plasticity and ending with genetic expression of DNA repair. Studies using Horvath's clock have found an association between age-related diseases like cancer, Alzheimer's and osteoarthritis with accelerated epigenetics. Studies on over 41,000 participants have found that each 5-year increase in DNA methylation age was associated with an 8-15% to increased risk of mortality. So now let's look at the results of the study. I'm going to just read it. Uh, compared to participants in the control group, participants in the treatment group scored an average 3.23 years younger at the end of the 8-week program, according to the Horwath uh, DNA methylation age clock. The authors also point out that, uh, yeah, that the it's a small study, there's only 40 people, and it was like not that long, only eight weeks, uh, and yeah, they are aware of that, so you, you can't really, based upon like uh, your entire life decision upon this study, and there are some many var variables that they probably didn't control for, for, exa for example, like I think they, maybe the majority of these health results this uh, younger age, it came probably from just uh, weight loss, they uh, stopped eating junk, they reduced their calorie intake, and as a result of that, they got healthier, and their biological age also uh, decreased as a result of that, because one of the only ways we know so far of actually, you know, extending lifespan in other species is calorie restriction, and uh, eating less calories, it just leads to better metabolic health, lowers the, the kind of burden on the system, and has like some other epigenetic effects as well, one of them being like the activation of these many different longevity pathways in the body, like sirtuins, increased NAD, autophagy, foxoproteins, Yamanaka factors, and uh, other things, these longevity pathways get turned on in response to like calorie restriction, as well as exercise, uh, proper sleep and uh, you know, independent fasting, which are all part of this study. Winning. So here's actually the specific diet that they were recommended to follow for the entire week. The, the guidance was three servings of liver and one serving being three ounces. So they got uh, nine ounces of liver per uh, week, which is actually pretty good. That kind of rounds up to a little bit more than one ounce per day, which is perfect. Like you can cover almost all of your micronutrient needs with uh, just an ounce of liver every day. And uh, yeah, it's uh, quite awesome to see that these, uh, these authors included liver into this uh, diet. And, you know, calorie restriction itself, it's not, it's not uh, guaranteed to work if you're uh, becoming deficient in your nutrients and micronutrients. So you do need to be covering your micronutrients as well, not just be in a, like a calorie deficit. Uh, in addition to that, uh, 5 to 10 eggs per week, which is also um, almost one egg, maybe one and a half eggs per day. Uh, guidance per day, the foods that they ate every day, were two cups of dark leafy greens, chopped packed, um, including kale, Swiss chard, collards, spinach, dandelion, mustard greens. Uh, doesn't include salad greens such as romaine, iceberg, and spring mix. Yeah, so uh, all these dark leafy uh, greens, kale, Swiss chard, uh, they're very high in all these methyl donors, and uh, yeah, generally considered much more nutrient dense than, uh, let's say, romaine or iceberg lettuce, uh, because iceberg lettuce is just, you know, um, it's just uh, grass or uh, greens with a little bit of water. It doesn't have like really nutrients. Whereas kale and Swiss chard, they are this dark. They have these uh, dark pigments and uh, beneficial effects on the microbiome and uh, also these uh, methyl donors like folate. Uh, two cups of cruciferous vegetables: uh, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, mm, mustard greens, watercress, 
and radish Swiss chard as well. So these are also quite uh, impactful in turning on many of these longevity pathways in the body through like sulforaphane that leads to glutathione and other like these anti antioxidant defense uh, systems. And uh, last, in top of that, the three additional cups of colorful vegetables, excluding white potatoes, sweet corn. So that would be for the glycemic variability so that they would want to kind of keep the uh, blood sugar more controlled, which is, uh, you know, true, at least like in animal studies, like higher insulin and IGF-1 signaling especially does appear to be associated with uh, shorter lifespans. So, uh, yeah, you basically don't want to be, you don't want to become hyperglycemic and hyperinsulinemic. So if you are, you know, starting to develop uh, symptoms of diabetes because of eating too many carbs, and then uh, that uh, definitely has uh, a shortening effect on your uh, health, health and uh, lifespan. Uh, one to two medium beets, four tablespoons of pumpkin seeds, four tablespoons of sunflower seeds, seeds, uh, one plus serving of methylation adaptogens to choose from uh, a half cup of berries, a half teaspoon of rosemary, a half teaspoon of turmeric, two medium gloves of garlic, two cups of green tea, two cups of oolong tea. So you would have to choose one, one from that. And um, yeah, like a rosemary has a ton of antioxidants, turmeric as well, berries, green tea for the EGCG and garlic also for like the sulfur and helps with like glutathione. And lastly, per day, for, for the, every day, it was also six ounces of animal protein, which is, you know, approximately like um, 160 to 180 like grams of, uh, of uh, meat from like grass-fed. Uh, I would imagine, yeah, it's just like meat. So it wasn't like, you know, it was like very plant-centric. It had a ton of uh, like salads and uh, vegetables, these dark leafy greens, but it wasn't vegan. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't even like plant-based, actually. Like if you eat six ounces of animal protein, plus some eggs and liver every day, then uh, I wouldn't consider it like uh, even plant-based. It's, it's almost very balanced. It's like a very paleo type of uh, diet. Um, and also two servings of low glycemic fruit. So I'd imagine it's like berries or uh, maybe like apples. The general guidance was to prefer organic, stay hydrated, uh, don't eat between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. So do some time-seed eating. It wasn't like complete interval fasting, but it was like uh, 12 hours of fasting and 12 hours of eating and uh, include some healthy oils, e.g. Uh, coconut oil, flaxseed, and pumpkin seed oil. Avoid sugar, candy, dairy, grains, legumes, beans. Minimize plastic food containers. The supplement was uh, phytogenics, which is pretty probiotic probably. Or, oh no, it's a, the, the uh, polyphenol powder, basically, of these uh, berries and vegetables uh, to get like more of these phytonutrients in, probably two servings daily. And ultra flora, which is the uh, probiotic Exercise, minimum of 30 minutes of exercise per day for at least five days. And at an intensity of 60 to 80% of maximum exertion. Sleep, average seven hours. Breathing, exercise. Uh, yeah, so there it is. Nice. So what do I think about the diet? Um, I think it's really good. Uh, it uh, does, you know, cover a lot of the essential nutrients, basically all of them with the liver and the egg yolks and some uh, meat. But at the same time, you also get all these different beneficial uh, polyphenols and other methyl donors from these uh, dark leaf, darky, dark leafy greens and the vegetables. So, yeah, I do, I do really like the diet. It's uh, pretty good. I think a lot of people will be able to like lose weight with it, but at the same time, it'll also, you know, improve their health. So, yeah, I do think that it's a really actually good diet, <laughs> surprisingly, surprisingly, because most of the time these diets tend to be uh, too biased or uh, very, very one sided. They either go like full vegan or full, uh, like, say, keto. Uh, so yeah, but this was um, like a really good diet. It actually is very similar to what I eat. Uh, just I eat more of. <laughs> I eat more more calories probably. I eat more carbs on some days. I eat more um, more meat, more protein. Uh, but yeah, generally I do I include a lot of these uh, dark leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables almost every day. Beets for sure. Uh, rosemary, garlic, uh, and the turmeric. I do consume them almost every day. And I actually have taken the same uh, DNA methylation test as well. Maybe not the same from the same company, but I have taken the DNA methylation test based upon the Horvath clock uh, myself last year in 2020. And uh, when I took the test, I was 25 years old in, the, in my passport. Uh, but the test results showed that I was actually 16 years old. So my biological age was 16, and which was like nine years younger. And I think that's, you know, that's quite, quite a good results, you would imagine. And, uh, but at the same time, like, I wasn't like surprised about it that much uh, because, you know, I have like a really good diet. I do actually, you know, a lot of independent fasting. I exercise regularly. I eat, you know, most days I eat once a day. I do, let's say, more this time of eating than uh, the other people do. 
Uh, and I do think that that has a pretty um, imp impactful effect on this uh, methylation, uh, DNA methylation process, because you're activating all these longevity pathways in a much more profound way than you do with just uh, regular thymus eating. And funny enough, like I'm not necessarily like restricting calories, although I'm not overeating them either. And I, because of I'm doing more this, um, let's say, tighter eating window, the calorie restriction isn't that, that important in terms of the longevity pathways, because uh, it has been shown in many studies that intermittent fasting mimics the effects of calorie restriction. So you get the same benefits of longevity without necessarily having to restrict the calories if you do your, uh, if you kind of confine your eating window in a smaller time frame. And uh, yeah, I think that that's one of one of the biggest reasons why my test results were, um, you know, that good. It's good. <laughs> But in the meanwhile, you can also check out my many other books about these similar topics of longevity and uh, health span, which you know, are centered around intermittent fasting, diet machine eating, as well as the kind of similar diet protocol that kind of balances both uh, nutrient density from animal foods, as well as the phytonutrients and polyphenols from plant foods. You can also check out my Metabolic Atavaji Masterclass that gives you a 12-hour video course about this entire topic. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.